Luis. I need you to describe your character and tell us your character's name, but I would love for you to do that with the understanding that your mouth is filled with blood. All right, well, uh, uh, my name is Xerxes Iletas. I'm six feet tall, I'm a paladin, broad-shouldered, muscular, dark hair, wavy, medium tan brown skin, amber eyes with mm, a kind of troubled, sometimes emptiness behind them, and uh, I imagine right now he's stumbling around, uh, wiping the blood off of his mouth as he's trying to maintain his sense of his surroundings. I start to approach, but from a little bit of an angle, and I keep my eyes locked on the child. Is it Elias? Your son turns to look at you. Hi. Are you okay? I'm okay. Can you come to me, please? You Elias, said... come here. I'm fishing. I'm trying to catch something. What are you trying to catch? I don't know. I don't know the kind of fish that live in a place like this. I'm approaching. You and look, I'm looking around. You look around. You look into the hole, expecting to see only darkness, and you see stars. Through the hole, looking straight down, you see endless stars. And they're stars you recognize, the stars over Kath Moira. Behind you, you feel a sudden reassuring presence, and you feel a massive winged shape appear behind you. A griffin formed of starlight and pure magic nuzzles against your armor. I uh, instinct instinctively just lean into him and uh, touch his beak. Griffins are, of course, half eagle and half lion. In a very cat-like way, your griffin nuzzles your armor and turns into a massive puddle like cats are wont to do. Vroom, lies down, talons in the front crossed, nestles down. Elias looks up. Are you listening for something? You hear whispers. On a 13, I need to ask you, do you speak Draconic? I do not. Oh. <laughs> That's the end of the campaign. Um, you do not. So all you hear is, I don't know, Godranis, Godranis. Do you, do you hear that, Elias? Do you hear that? Do you hear anything? Dad, you sound crazy. <laughs> is everybody okay? Come here. <laughs> he goes, okay, but, and you see that he takes the little fishing pole and puts it in between the talons of the griffin. Uh -huh. So it's just uh -huh. sitting there, and he gets up, what's wrong? And I uh, I kneel down, and I just, I look at him, and I uh, move the hair that's in his forehead off to the side, look in his eyes. I'm just glad you're safe. Of course I'm safe. You'd never let anything happen to me. I would never let anything happen to you. I'm gonna look back down into that pond. 
wand. You repeat Gordranus back into the pool. Gordranus, I say it again louder. Elias holds your arm. Dad, you know I won't look like this when you get home. I know. Wait. Come back here. Dad. No, 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 don't leave. Just let me have this. He holds the fishing rod. I think I caught something. <gasps> he disappears into the pool, and you hear <gasps> the entire neighborhood in front of you vanishes <gasps> as a body the size of a mountain crashes into the city. <gasps> A massive red form writhes in pain, and a face as tall as a cathedral turns to you. A flood of sanguine fluid <coughs> emerges from the mouth, and a horned figure looks at you. You look and see something older than the world look back. I'm sorry. I approach. I'm sorry. What are you? What are you doing here? What is this? My child, I fear I am too late. There are secrets they did not tell you. He opens his hand. I rush to it. His hand is the size of a marketplace, and you look, and in the center, translucent in ghostly imagery, you see a small tree. You must look, he is coming. From behind you, a figure emerges in translucent white light. Could you do me the favor of describing what your husband looked like in life? Oh! Oh my god. How did you do that? I gotta go. So. Where did we breathe? That, when, when does that come? This whole episode is a trigger warning. <laughs> <laughs> I'm too upset to take notes. Uh. The Vandrin is, uh, about 5'10. He's just a little bit shorter than I am. He's got red hair, straight, about shoulder length half elven in appearance. He looks, if you look at Elias, our son, you're seeing the spitting image of what he's going to look like when he's grown up. Evandrin steps past you. He cannot see you, and you understand in this moment, because your husband does not meet your eyes, that this is a memory. He is not here again, and he is still gone. He holds an amulet, steps towards the tree, and the blossoms from the tree blow in his direction. For a moment, his hair sweeps behind him, mixed with the petals of this flowering sapling. He falls to his knees, clutches his stomach, I run to his side. I know, I know this is a memory, but I, I haven't seen him in so long, and I, I want to see his face. You turn to see his face. You see, he turns up to see someone else. <clears throat> Something's wrong. The image is shattered in a searing burst of light. Mm. Another figure, tall as a mountain, all of the light, all of the fire is but a shadow in the face of the dawn. You see a gleaming golden figure land with one colossal foot on the throat of this horned figure press him further into the rubble of Avalir, mm. and you see the horn figure looks to you, 
and cries out. His hands are still out? You stand now in the palm of his hand. I, uh, uh, I reach down and I touch it. You see the I figure. You do. You feel a pulse. You feel warm blood flowing through this giant. Oh. You look up. The face of the being above you is no face. There is no warmth to the eyes. You see the pitiless, featureless glare of the sun itself. I look up at its face. Is it, is it looking down in my direction? It turns down to look at you. Turn your eyes from this sinner. He is beyond redemption. What has he done? He has betrayed his kin. You see, the horned figure turns to you and says, it's all right, it's all right. Just ask yourself, Xerxes. Whom did we betray? And he, I, 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 I. Stop! Oh. Boom! You hold your hand, and as you hold it up, the light of the sun leaves and is abjured. Boom! <laughs> the horned fiend coughs, looks at you with the expression of a being that has just had its life saved, and says, No mortal would do this thing that you have done. Xerxes, says, if you look down and see the stars, what will you see if you look up? His uh, hand is are his fingers curled up? I know I'm in his palm. Mm-hmm. I, uh, I'm, I look at his face and I start to approach one of the fingers that are standing up, probably like a pillar. Mm-hmm. And I put my hand on the finger and lean on it. And I'm holding on mm-hmm. to him. Yeah. And I look up. You see the ground, and it is fast approaching. What? And with that, you wake up. Oh, oh Daddy. <laughs> oh. I think I'm in the wrong class. <laughs> I, thought this, I thought this was first for biology. Yeah. Right? <laughs> and for a moment, the falls themselves, a hundred feet tall, reflect the face of Sam's character. Sam, would you go ahead and describe your character for us? Sure. Uh, wow, what face to describe? <laughs> uh, uh, I am a loquacious Seely, mm-hmm. a changeling. Uh, my, my normal, uh, or should I say at rest, uh, appearance is uh, pale skin, um, white, white eyes with sort of dark uh, shading around them, white hair. Uh, in a sort of a up shock. Um, if you look very faintly on the on the sort of gray skin of my face, there are little uh, sort of veins, marbleization tendrils of of, uh, of black that, if you stared long enough, you'd see they, they sort of subtly move and shift constantly. Um, he's wearing a uh, uh, a, a gold uh, a gold jacket with uh, a purple lining. Uh, carries himself very high and mighty, um, and but uh, this is a broadcast, is it not? This is very much a broadcast. Well, uh, as loquacious broadcasts uh, to the uh, crystal columns of Avalir, uh, before he uh, begins his proclamations uh, and heralds of the day, his appearance shifts uh, slightly. The veins in his in his face sort of. Uh, drip and move, sort of like paint being drained out of a can, and are uh, replaced with other pigments and other colors. His face becomes golden, as gold as, as his jacket, and his hair becomes as purple as the lining of his jacket. He's quite a sight to behold. He, he holds in his hand 
Um, is, it, is it a wand? Is it a rapier? It's hard to tell. Mm -hmm. it, it's long and has something at the end of it, like a, a like Bob Barker's old microphone. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, and, and he and he and he seems to speak into it and it magically amplifies his voice across across the city of Avalir. Uh, would you like care to make the morning announcements, loquacious? I would, but uh, but uh, Arya, Arya, I need my copy. My copy. Oh, Mr. Seely, right Mr. Seely, got you right here. Yes, sir. Here you go. Wow. Count me down. Count me down. Oh, in, in how five, do I look? Do I look good? Four, yes. All three, right. Here we go. Two. <clears throat> Good morning and salutations, sundry subjects of the soaring city of Avalir. I am Loca Loquacious Seely, your handsome and helpful herald. I, uh, I report the news that shapes Avalir's views. <laughs> Tonight, as we all know, marks the eve of the replenishment and our return to Kath Moira, our terrestrial sister city. Remember, folks, make sure to fasten all those loose valuables and belongings tightly, <laughs> as our friends in the Navigators Guild wish to remind us that there's always a pinch of turbulence in our descent back towards Exandria Firma. And speaking of belongings, why not try Orison's Odd Tack, <laughs> the spell glue that sticks to what it's told. Uh, as Orison himself might tell you, and you, you see uh, on the screen, on the, on the crystals broadcasting this message, you see uh, Loquacious's face uh, for a moment uh, uh, quivers and st starts to morph and dissolve into another face. His hair changes as well. Um, and to the untrained eye, it would look like an edit or a, a cross dissolve. <laughs> but 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 to, but to, uh, to those who know that he is a changeling, uh, he's actually changing his physical appearance live on screen uh, to that of uh, of Orison. Uh, his skin becomes a deep red. Uh, his hair curls into curved uh, horns, uh, that of a, of a tiefling, and speaks with a totally different voice, uh, and says. Uh, hello there, I'm Orison from Orison's Odd Tech. <laughs> the trusted name in arcane adhesives for over 30 years. Check out our replenishment special, 50% off today only. <laughs> 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 Hop on down to Orison's. And then whew, it morphs back into uh, Loquacious Seely, uh, who announces, well, make ready for tonight's fireworks extravaganza at, uh, to the Dawn's Ledge side and enjoy the parade of beasts beginning at sundown in Excelsior Plaza, right outside the headquarters of my own Herald's Tome, your trusted record of renown. As the Archmages always say, knowledge is power. So pack a punch with a people's paper. <laughs> All glory to the Academy Arcane and to the proud people of Avalir. I'm loquacious Seely saying, Seely you later. <laughs> you see a, a Hadmadad, which is a basically uniformed little bright red and blue. It's a fabric construct, sort of like a scarecrow. But you see uh, it walks the streets in a little pre-recorded message and it's sort of smiling, bright blue fabric head, a little stuffed sort of burlap sack goes, Get your bumba shoots, get your bumba shoots. Everyone, get your bumba shoots for inclement weather. Rain, sleet, oh. snow, there's no telling what kind of weather we might be facing. And you see a little wizard mother with her daughter walking by in their robes. And the little girl says, Mommy, what's weather? And you see. Oh. <laughs> wow. Ooh. Wow. We've got to get her into school. <laughs> <laughs> I um, and you see, you see, the mother says, "Don't worry, darling. Weather is something we must only contend with for a month every seven years." And um, <laughs> uh, and walks along. Bumba shoots. Get your bumba shoots. Wizards of Avalon. Um, you head off uh, to go s to go find the architect arcane, Hierophant Abjura of the College of Abjuration. Your ex-wife, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Laren Coromar Seely. Speaking of Laren Coromar Seely, mm. um, we are going to uh, uh, cut to the depths of Avalir. We do not see the sky here. To be subterranean in a place that rarely touches the earth is a very interesting thing. But we are deep within the Meridian Labyrinth a network of passageways and arcane machinery, and we see a massive arcane engine 
gleaming silver, polished to pure reflection of its surroundings and illuminated by the light of its own spell engines. And we see therein a powerful wizard. Abria, would you describe your character for yes. us? Let's go. Leirin Koromar Sili uh, is this tall, lanky, dark-skinned elf. Uh, her clothing is all gold and highly ornate, and even here in this uh, place that never sees sunlight seems to like glow with the light of the sun. She has a, a purple cape kind of thrown over her shoulder and in her hands she's just tossing this little screwdriver and every time it hits the air it turns into a different tool and hits her hand. She catches it again as she's sort of checking over uh, her great work. Uh, looking at her face she's very pretty and angular um, and her eyes glow with like this gold energy that is exactly her magic and it kind of radiates off of her. Uh, and yeah, she, the look on her face is one of both extreme focus, but also like that heartbeat before being distracted by something else. She's uh, focusing on everything down here. The entire heart of Avalir in her mind is hers. Looking at the engine in front of you. Um, where does your prodigious focus now move, having beheld the product of a long, long time of labor? Even with your perfectionist eye, you are finding yourself hard pressed to find anything here that warrants enormous redrafting. It's been a moment since your fixes have felt redundant. Yeah, now that this great piece is fine, I think everyone else kind of moving through here seems a little more relaxed, but that's only tensed her up more. She's waiting for a break or a flaw or just that little heartbeat of like arcane flash before something goes awry. And then sort of seeing nothing and hearing nothing, her <clears throat> mind will drift towards the batteries and where all of that energy is stored and where the connections will be made once the replenishment happens. Mm -hmm. And then the cables and tethers back beyond that that go to a place that only she knows. Battery. 100, 120 years, you get what's called an apogee solstice, where the orbit of the spheres, the relationship of the moons of Exandria kick in and everything aligns, and that veil becomes so thin that incredible workings of magic are possible. Now, you knew that an apogee solstice was coming, but the grand geometer specifically reads ley lines because it's been recorded in the history of Avalir, your city, your home, that some apogee solstices are powerful enough to shift ley lines, to take the arteries and veins of the magical workings of this world and reshape them. You reading the ancient lore of Avalir were able to build the grand geometer to measure the strength of a coming apogee solstice. You were able to, do, to deduce that anything above a reading of 0 0.025 on the grand geometer would indicate that there would be some slight shifting of the ley lines. 0 0.025. You're reading 0.5. Laren is in a city of wizards, often the most cerebral person in the room. Weeping does not come often, but there have not been moments like this that deserved it. And in that moment, as you realize what is possible, a 
lion's head gargoyle on the door, little door knocker goes, Madam, your ex-husband is at the door. (laughs) 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 Walk over and throw open the door. (laughs) My darling. (laughs) (laughs) And I clock very quickly that we are super magic right now. Hi. Hi. You're home during the middle of the day. Mm. Don't you have a lot of stuff to do to land? I do. Come in. Oh, thank you so much. You see, I've been trying to reach you through the normal means, and it seems yeah. that someone's been ignoring someone else's. You know, when we separated, we said that we would try to remain friends, try to keep open, clear lines of communication. Well, you know, we are we a day out the from the replenishment. Uh, yeah. What? All the more reason. Hairstyle all the more check reason. Do you need from me? You look beautiful. What do you need? What do you need? Well, what do thank you? Thank you. Thank you. I'm just saying we're going to be down there a lot, probably mm-hmm. mingling in the same uh, with the same folks, glad handing with the same people down there. If if we can't even talk amongst ourselves, then it's going to be very awkward for us. It's going to be very awkward for me, frankly, having to explain why there's this weird coldness in the room. And you know, I know Are that you you're obsessed your with your social work. Social status, my problem right now. You don't have to. Just reply to my messages. Oh, the ones from Aria. <laughs> <laughs> Aria is just my assistant. Mm-hmm. I mean, she's mm-hmm. she's a fantastic assistant. She came highly recommended. I'm sure she did. She happens to be young. She happens to be attractive, but that goes with the territory. It has nothing to do with anything else. Of course it doesn't. I'm not safe on the side of, the <laughs> of course it doesn't. You have my unadulterated attention. Well, right that now. would make the first time that's ever happened. Oh. <laughs> I begin summoning a fireball. <laughs> Before you go, I don't want to leave it like this, all right? I just was struck with the memory that the last time we landed, the cities, you know, that's when we got married. I remember. So. I don't know, we, we were okay once, and maybe we can be again. Just for a moment, just for the month that we're docked, and then you can go back to hating me. I don't, I don't, I don't hate you. And I will be on my best behavior. I will too. You should get that. And I should get back to work. Good luck. Um, uh, we find them going to the vault of the golden scythe. Yeah! <laughs> um, there I am, shirtless, close to yeah! um, <laughs> The vault is a dance club, okay? Um, There's no gold here, baby. (laughs) (laughs) Not yet. Um, Drop the baby. uh, uh, Here in the vault, um, we see uh, countless automata um, shouting silk dressed sky pirates, it seems like almost. Uh, Proud merchants, uh, barrels of summoning salt rolling, giant wheelbarrows full to the brim with diamonds cut perfectly, wheeling throughout uh, flowers, festivities. There is a bridled unicorn. Um, uh, and we see a, uh, and all of this moves, uh, and there is, in the center of this chaos, this controlled chaos, this endless empire of arcane riches, we see a single man at the helm, the ringmaster of a circus of impossible wealth. Lou, could you please describe your character? Yeah. Yeah. Let's go. Uh, Nidus is, I'm gonna look at a picture of him because I always forget. Uh, Nidus <laughs> is like kind of a stocky dude, uh, like right around 5'10". Um, he has uh, long dreads uh, cuffed with gold that come and lay just on his shoulder. Uh, 
like wearing the uh, red of the golden scythe. Like a red coat uh, with uh, a like gorgeous golden pin uh, with the signature of the scythe, uh, with a cape draped along his back. He wears one of those funny like kind of Renaissance merchants ca floppy caps uh, <laughs> uh, to one side. Uh, his face, long uh, scar from his pirate days over his right eye. Um, I know it's on my left, but I'm looking at a picture that's the reverse. So uh, <laughs> uh, over his left, uh, over his right eye. The viewers are also looking at yes, flipped yeah. okay. Oh, are, is it flipped for them as well? I think so. I don't know. <laughs> over his right eye is a scar. Over his left eye, you see three tattoos. Uh, he has tattoos of X's. He's got three uh, over his eye. Uh, a, a, a beard that ends in a golden ring uh, uh, and then set in his uh, face are uh, two eyes of hazel flecked with literal gold. Um, uh, it's expensive uh, procedure. Very expensive <laughs> procedure. Put gold in your iris. <laughs> oh, um, you hear a, a booming voice from across the hall, again, moving through someone who is leading a very, there's a full sphinx, a like yeah. winged lion of the man's face walking. Whoa. This is our, uh, I'm, are we putting on the Parade of Beasts? You are, of course, the Golden Side is putting on the Parade of, of Beasts. The sphinx walks up and says, um, hello, I understand that I've been brought here for the Parade of Beasts. I am. <laughs> I am, of course, a speaking and thinking creature. Of course. Of course. We completely understand. Yes. We completely understand. The title Parade of Beasts is archaic in many ways. Yes. From a time <laughs> when uh, the riches of Avalir were not so that we would ha be graced by the presence of one such as yourself, great. Oh, I, uh, um, uh, you may call me um, Pharaohmine. Great Pharaohmine. Uh, you see, he says, uh, do you, it, I was instructed that you just needed me to roar. I can say, if you want me to say something. <laughs> yes. uh, should anyone uh, uh, converse with you, I feel you should feel more than welcome to speak. However, uh, we thought it might be easier for you should you just give an enormous roar from deep within. Uh, it's quite all right. The, the, the scythe has saved my maze and repelled a number of monsters from oh, my home, so oh, okay, I, yeah. I owe you a great, <laughs> I owe you, do you, great. are you no. unaware that? No, no, no I'm very aware and, and thrilled <laughs> that you're here to give back I, to I, a, 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 an order that's given so much to you. You're, you're, the, you're the sailor of marines of the Harvest Moon, your, your merchant yes, company, they, they saved the, yes. the enchanted they glade in which my maze can be found and yes. they, so, and I said I would give, I owed them a boon, <laughs> thinking that I might, in a time of need, come to their rescue. And they said, do you, are you free on this date for the parade of, <laughs> oh parade of beasts? And what ease it is for you that you, you need not give of yourself in any way. We, we simply ask that you oh, uh, parade. <laughs> that's it. Yeah, I guess that's, yeah, I guess that's, I guess that's easier for me. Oh, <laughs> uh, what is your name again? Oh, uh, Pharaohmine. Pharaohmine, you need to get, uh, can you go ahead and get with uh, Alessander and then the two of you just talk and I'm gonna keep on moving. Um, you see that Alessander says, uh, how much do we owe you for the, your service? And he says, no, no, I, I, it's a It's a boon, it's a boon! <laughs> <laughs> Pay him, it's a boon! <laughs> Alistair opens the door and says, Guildmaster, the, the Sphinx is pitching alts on his roar. <laughs> wow. uh, <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> well, uh, we really need to nail this down. Uh, you know, talent. Uh, <laughs> Have a lovely day, Magister. Uh, he looks, and you see Alistair, uh, Captain Esperod steps in and says, Magister, right this way, yes. um, and moves him on out of there. Um, Alessandro, what the fuck? <laughs> is he actually doing that? Do I, oh, is, the, is the Sphinx actually pitching alts on his roar, or is that, was that no, your creative no, solution? No, no, that was my creative solution. The Sphinx is actually just sort of, so, Sulking in the corner. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, that's more of a problem. <laughs> oh, sorry. I just thought he just seemed. But do you have some ideas for Alton Aurora? Could that? Like, 
all, all glory to Avenue. Oh, I that do. he would yell that instead of roaring. Maybe he could do both. I don't know. It's a long parade. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, honestly, Alison, I'm sorry for shooting this down. This is good. Let's go talk to that Sphinx. <laughs> Guardian of the Seventh, Senior Sight Warden of the Eyes of Avalier. Travis, did you describe your character? Mm. Yeah. Uh, you see, uh, standing tall, but with a, a cloak and, and a hood pulled up just behind his, uh, his feathered head, uh, a six and a half foot tall um, uh, Ice Fura. So uh, a bird person, if you will, with very white feathering uh, that falls into brown tips, mm -hmm. um, a dark beak with slightly gray, slightly bluish eyes, proud, strong shoulders, strong wings tucked back, but, f but fairly folded back beneath a, uh, a cloak, um, and uh, a, a badge of some sort that's just slightly hidden on his, mm -hmm. on his person. His arms sort of tucked in tight, only to, if for no other reason than to hide the double holstered axes, hand axes that are underneath his, his arm, and wraps uh, around his, his wrists and his taloned fingers and feet um, as, he, as he moves along. And this is uh, Serret Agrupnen. While we were there, uh, you know, the, we get reports from the constabulary in Vasselheim that the Archmage Vespin Chloris is. Hold on a second. The Archmage Vespin Chloris is uh, gone missing. Uh, we didn't think anything of it, you know. <laughs> the, the report of the, t basically, the only reason we heard either or tale of it is that the uh, the people there were worried that he was doing some heresy. You know Vasselheim, they're worried that someone was oh, doing something yeah. against the gods. And, uh, so, what we did then is, you know, they say, hey, did this guy do anything and is he is he stowing away aboard the city and about to take off? So we did a sweep. We said no, Best McClure's is not stowed away. But you know, even if he was, we're not going to answer to a. You're not going to extradite the guy. So uh, no trace of him. Just vanished into thin air. Well, that's what we've been getting the chamber ready for. I mean, they you know we took a quick look at his chambers. No hiding or hair of him. I mean. <sighs> The rumor is he was trying to recreate the matron's ritual. <laughs> Another one of those, huh? Yeah, exactly. I mean, every two-bit sorcerer edge maze pops up with their body scattered in a miasma of their own goo trying to name check some prime deity. It comes in here, nothing more than a stain, but... Uh, you know, this, uh, it looks like this joker did it so bad that he didn't even leave a hair or a fingernail. I mean, there's nothing left of the guy. Emir Porco, great wizard and first of the Septarian. At the feet of Emir Porco, who do we find, Marisha? <laughs> <laughs> You see a middle-aged, although you wouldn't be able to tell, <laughs> elven woman, clear ivory skin with hair that is silvery white, almost reflects the sky around her. She has a long kind of collared, breasted coat over top that stretches down like a, a gown in an emerald green that almost has its own silken sheen to it with a kind of teal blue indigo, <laughs> name your color dress, depending on how it hits the light mm -hmm. underneath. In her hair, she has this almost like a sun ray fascinator made of gold where pieces of her hair are falling through it and around her neck is a rigid golden ring. If you look closely at it, it has tiny blue crystals, almost like tiny Swarovskis that are broomstone, Ooh. and it lightly levitates oh, and go. rotates and spins around her at all time, mm. as well as a orb, a glowing orb that is her focus, 
that also just kind of hovers, almost celestial, planetary in nature. She looks as if the outfit was made for her this morning, because it probably was. <laughs> <laughs> her makeup is impeccable. She is the most put together woman you have ever seen in your life. And she looks up and she just goes, Happy replenishing, grandfather. The massive statue of your grandfather smiles knowingly, his gaze eternally fixed upon the city that he raised into the sky. It is rare to see an ancient elf, but you see, slightly bowed with age, wearing a shimmering golden cloak that appears to offer little glimmering crystals of golden light that shimmer in geometric shapes and turn into motes and float away, a face illuminated by its own wisdom and counsel. The eyes of Eldamir are soft and smiling, and he leans upon a wooden staff that he has wielded for centuries. Your eminence. Keeper. It is a pleasure to meet you here in this place. The pleasure is mine. What do I owe the pleasure? Um, you see, Loris says, the great Archmage Eldamir the Wise wished to meet you face to face, my good friend. <laughs> you see, um, uh, Eldamir says, I did, I did wish to meet you face to face. I was told, the word reached my ear, high up though I am, I still see much, that the record has been set that the Librarium in Cantatum, under its current Keeper of Scrolls, has bested the previous record for magical knowledge gained in a single venture. And I asked to whom the young Archmage or Co had wrested this title, and I was informed she had wrested it from herself, <laughs> who had set the previous record. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, my God. Well, <laughs> <I doubt. laughs> to go to the the druids of old Torum under those old Gaudrashari, and to say to them, well, you listen here, you, uh, you might be able to turn into a bear, but so what, I was going to take the city to the sky. <laughs> and, to, and, he, and, to, and he wrestled with them, he did, and they said, you're not going to split the city in half, and he said, there's more broomstone. Did you know that the veins of broomstone set into the sculpture are perfect to the millimeter with the veins of broomstone in the base of the city itself. It is a perfect replica. You know, I did, but I never tire of hearing of it or your stories. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure that I repeat myself. That, oh, here's a story you won't have heard, and I'll tell this, and it's a little, it's a little. It's oh, please, I have all the time. Well, the oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> Are you all right? Do you need to sit down? Yeah. Are you all right? No, 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 quite all right. Hold on. I... <clears throat> there it is. Oh, oh well. <laughs> all I wish to say was... Oh, your grandfather and me, poor girl, and me of the bull, they made this statue, and the original, the original artist... <laughs> The original artist, he was going to be lifting the city aloft, and the, in the, the structure that he made, they had a small miniature version. This was, this was centuries ago. Yes. And they had a small miniature version, yes. and they lifted it up, and they said, well, put it in the dome. And he said, so what? Everyone standing on the floor is going to see the bottom of my chin looking up at the city up here. It's the most unflattering <laughs> angle <laughs> I, I've ever heard of. He said, the city should be down here. So the people on the ground can see my face looking down at the city. <laughs> Loris turns to you. Sorry for the surprise. I'm never surprised. <laughs> it's this uncanny resolve you possess that means 
that we have some conversations to hold. My counterpart, the other apprentice of Eldamir the Wise, Volusia of the Heart's Emblem. Volusia? Uh, you see he leans in and says, Volusia. Uh, Volusia has announced her intention to retire, and an apprentice's seat will be opening in the Ring of Gold. In the Ring of Gold? That is correct. She has announced her intention to return to Kael Morrow in Marquette, there to... I couldn't tell you. Why would she want to go to Marquette? She has grown weary of the sky, she says, and wishes for the company of other elves. She, I don't know, wants to build a tower. Perhaps she's tired of being a medium fish. Hmm. Well, I'm not sure what good it is to be a larger fish in a puddle. <laughs> That's because I'm talking to a shark. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Come with a plus one. Uh, let's say yes. Oh. <laughs> let's oh, no. say yes. Why? Who did Why? you bring? Uh, I brought, uh, it mm -hmm. takes me a second to remember her name. I love it. Okay. Um, but uh, wow. but her wow. her name is is Bolo, I think. Bolo. Bolo. Um, <laughs> she's uh, she's a friend of a friend. We were sort of set up. This is the second uh, time I've ever met her. She's gorgeous, isn't she? Melinda, Melinda mentioned that people were asking for plus ones at the last. Oh minute. yes, I I, yes. I told everyone that that would be fine. So. All right. Fantastic. Nice um, to meet you, Ambola. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, come on, yes. man! Oh, wow. <laughs> How many Bolo, Bolo wants to be a reporter like me. No. I, eventually, I'm going to be a reporter. No, no. no. I have no. taken no. her under my wing, and I think she's got a bright future. This is disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh my god! Oh. oh. This your house? <laughs> yes. Um, yeah. Yes. Who's that like Bolo yes. in the city? <laughs> you know what? You know what, Bolo? Why don't you go fetch us some drinks and some oh. just do some mingling? You know, oh. there's a lot of stuff that you can hear by um, picking up on people's <laughs> conversations in these events. You might get some leads and clues. So start practicing. Maybe take some mental notes and get us some drinks. All right? In Aor, sometimes it is illegal to ask these questions. From Aor. You know, it's fascinating. I heard that there was um, some stowaways from the last time we visited Aeor. Oh, she's not a stowaway at all. I, I, I sent a letter and had her brought here, so. Yes. <laughs> no, <laughs> sorry, you I just. You want drinks? <clears throat> yes, please. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> she walks off. She Is it she she like like <laughs> you it kill visual. everybody. You can kill us all, I think her name is <laughs> I think her name is Bolo. <laughs> <laughs> That's anyway. the most famous dude thing in the world. To do. <laughs> I've like brought the most random oh God, like I think Bolo means hello in Aorian uh -huh. or something. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Wow. I think her name's Bolo. Saris <laughs> oh, is making his usual rounds, mm -hmm. and I believe we're still waiting for the others. Nidus will roll up at this point. Yeah. Uh, an army of, let's say, 700 Hadmadad? Uh, 700 <laughs> Hadmadads are uh, carrying a full-size tree. Uh, where's the rarest place in the world uh, I could acquire a tree from? Oh, wow. This is so sick. Um, okay, at this time, Marquette is fire. not yet Desert. So there, the rarest magical tree you can find is in the thick jungles of Marquette, many days' journey past the nearest village, deep into the wilderness. Uh, so we got one of those. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, you see a scintillating tree. So hundreds of brightly colored arcane scarecrow automata um, carrying a tree whose bark is scent 
twinkling lapis lazuli and whose leaves are a deep, like almost black purple um, that continuously blooms into enormous, bright, the lightest pink blossoms all over the tree. I go up to Nidus. Yes. A gift uh, to the family, Porco, uh, both to you and to your grandfather's continued vision. Nidus, you always bring the best treasures. Uh, well, for the best people, <laughs> nothing else will do. And then I just kind of start to loop my hands around and you see arcane sigils form into a disc that extend out and I lift the tree kind of up and make it like this centerpiece of the party that's kind of levitating over everyone's head and rotating. You do me such an honor. Well, it has to have front placement. Uh, uh, Nidus, uh, give me an insight check. Okay. Oh, that's a cool... 24. Oh, wow. You clock a bunch of wizards around the party looking at this tree going, fuck, and like looking at like <laughs> a like nicely wrapped jewelry box and being like, <laughs> um, you go over and you see um, you see that uh, uh, you see that the uh, there is a there is a Hadmadad holding a small tray of drinks and you see Bolo is there saying, "I need drinks from you, not this." And you see that the Hadmadad's like, "Listen, I only have a small list of pre-programmed responses. I'm not actually sentient. So if I'm saying this, you know that you've asked for something that's not included in my brain." <laughs> Good evening. I know all the faces in this gin joint, but I, I don't seem to know yours. This bag is giving me a hard time. I'm sorry to hear that. I, I didn't catch your name. Bola. Bola. I am. I am Seret Agrubnin, my friends call me Pinch. Bola from... Aeor. <laughs> Bola from Aeor. Mysterious. If you need anything, please don't hesitate to ask. Can I escort you? I need the drinks. You need the drinks. This bag keep arguing with me. <laughs> yes, it does. I hate it when they do that. Can you destroy? <laughs> oh my God. I can sense your frustration. I'll be sure to take this up with the maker of this fine machine. Let me yes. see what I can do. What do you mean machine is a bag? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be back. I'll be back. Hood up. <laughs> <laughs> I make my way down th through the thing. I go over to Loquacious. Who the fuck did you come with? <laughs> A blur of gold comes by. Who the fuck did you come with? Oh. And I take back off to go find them. Oh, <laughs> oh you don't need to, Laren. She, she's just, she's just some arm candy that was uh, offered to me by arm a friend. Arm candy. Of she threatened to expire the help. Too <laughs> sweet. Well, it's gonna be a fun night for me then. Oh. <sighs> I'm gonna grab that champagne from your hands. Lyra, do you take off your bottle? No, I, no, I, I stay. You yep. stay. As she's sort of looking at it, I'm just gonna do a, do something that I've done to her hundreds of times, but not in a while, and just sort of just gently oh. rub her oh. shoulder oh and uh, inspire her. Oh. Oh. You want to throw some bardic inspiration on that roll? Go for it. Oh. All right. Uh, when you make contact, I think a little bit of her perfume kicks up, and it smells like a silver and violet and petrichor, mm. which were the flowers at our wedding. Oh, oh stop oh, it! Oh, stop oh, it! So you get a D10. Oh my God! Thank you. Uh, uh, Nidus, you take a set of like master like tools out of your thing. Um, you hit this with like a tuning fork that you have <laughs> that you use for it to like like okay, it's rare metal. What's yeah. the metal? Um, it makes a weird note. On the metal, on the fork, the, the the one you go for the most often, which is gold, mm -hmm. right? It makes the right noise, but there's a weird tenor to it. Mm -hmm. And as you look at it, you look over the fragment of this bow. This bow was at one time twelve feet tall. This is made of gold, mm -hmm. but it's not made of gold from any mine on Exandria. 
because this this is gold wrought from the heavens themselves. Mm -hmm. This is extra planar gold. Mm -hmm. You are what what your dear friend Laren is holding is the former bow of a solar, which is a type of angel. Announcing the champion of the Matron of Ravens, Pervon Su! Oh, shut oh. your fucking <laughs> mouth, Brennan <laughs> Lee Mulligan! <laughs> um, and you see, walking. What? <laughs> Do you see? Very important figure. Uh, <laughs> the reaction to the table. <laughs> when I yell, oh, he shit, just, like, what? <laughs> parts the ivy a little bit so we get a good look. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, you see, <laughs> uh, walking uh, through the doors of the Palazzo Porco, no. uh, a young man, long dark hair, light brown skin, a severe. Grave expression on his face. <laughs> oh, this guy. Oh, the <laughs> this guy. And you see, he's got a wolf with him. Yeah. <laughs> um, walks into the party and hush goes over the gala. As in this age of Arcanum, a champion of the gods has walked in. What a quaint and wondrous thing to behold. Uh, the man who walks in bears terrestrial mud on his black leather boots. He walks in the stoic countenance of a ranger, and you see beside him a black and gray wolf stride in. He looks around sullenly, a mantle of raven's feathers around his neck. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> He's not clad in armor, though. You do not see him clad in armor. Uh, oh, interesting. Uh, oh, of course. <laughs> oh, shit. Okay, sorry. I'll tell you after. Hey, uh, why would any kind of special armor nope. be needed in this wonderful yeah. age of Arcana? Sure, sure. He's just a guy. He's just a guy. Mm -hmm. just a guy. Um, Put on his boots. Uh, uh, walks oh, in, um, uh, and you you see uh, this young man walk in. I will tell you, uh, uh, out of game, truly, this guy's like probably like seventh or eighth level. He doesn't. Ha he's not glowing with uh, okay. tons of. Yeah, he's not. Up. He's not. Do we all know who he is. No. Ah, okay. Uh, uh, this guy got requested from somebody. You hear a voice in your text thoughts, but the voice is quiet, like it's someone whispering to themselves in their own mind. Um, do you turn to look to see who it is? I just kind of look in the periphery, barely tilting my head as little as I can. As little as you can. Um, you see a wobbling Hadmadad who has stopped serving drinks, just sort of wobbling there. Oh. <laughs> Not my little scarecrows. I didn't bring. I, <laughs> Guys, I didn't mean I to bring seven hundred the of them. <laughs> <laughs> um, sort of wobbling there. It's like not serving. See the, the the tray. Kind of lists to one side and comes back, and you see with your detect thoughts. These are uh, automata. They're not sentient. Listening through detect thoughts. Quadranus. Oh. And you see the tray clatters to the ground and the Hod Madad disanimates and is a pile of clothing on the floor soaking up the champagne. Very recently, I have come into the awareness that my mistress feels a concern. Something is moving upon the face of Exandria. Something that for the moment eludes even her sight. Her counsel brought me to Vasselheim, but my search was drawn short when I arrived at the sanctum of Vespin Chloris. Did you meet him? 
No. He had gone missing by the time I arrived. But you arrived at the site where he attempted this, this rite? Here you see Pervon looks surprised. You just said something Pervon did not know. Oops. <laughs> I will cast Gift of Gab. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what does that do? You'll I see. take it back. Yep. <laughs> it's a. No you like shit. Rewind. Yes, yep. It's rewind. Yes, yep. Mm-hmm. Yes, yep. Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, you see, he. Uh, so you, you. So in other words, that is like a vision that you have of the future that is quickly drawn back, and you see he goes. Wow. Um. I cannot long remain in this place. My heart belongs back in Isilra. There are still answers waiting for me in Vasselheim. The Archmage Chloris attempted something wholly different. Not a recreation, but something new. Something much riskier and more foolhardy. Riskier than an ascension to godhood? The god of death that ruled over that domain, whose name my mistress sundered and removed from the fabric of reality itself. What complaint could he offer for his own demise that would not be hypocrisy? God of death. Dying can hardly be said to be an aberration. Every mortal mage who has attempted to recreate the Raven Queen's ascension has attempted to do as she did. Right. Ascend. Yes. To a prime deity, strike them from their throne and take their place, erasing their name. Vespin is a better mage than any other who has attempted and we know that he did not commit that same folly. We do not know for certain what happened, but having removed what we know did not leaves us afraid. Okay. And just so we're clear here, <laughs> you wouldn't be comfortable with like a one-on-one sit-down interview, <laughs> Like a, just a, an exclusive, an exclusive. I could get some really great illustrations made. Good of luck you. with your pit of vipers. <laughs> I truly wish that we all may come out from under the shadow. And Free advice: s- change your first name. Um, you see, <laughs> he goes. It's normal where I come from. And you see, he uh, he he, he hurrah, uh, turns uh, his wolf <gasps> vanishes in a, uh, a blur of magic as he in a movement of raven's wings, <gasps> vanishes and disappears. I'll pick up one of the raven feathers that fell on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. That um, guy needs a PR makeover. <laughs> 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 wow. You left quite the impression. You look at this Hadmadad down on the ground, it's animated, something's wrong. And on a 31, you're not alone in this room. Invisibility is a pretty beloved power. It's easy to get, even very junior mages can master it. The problem with invisibility is light is very important for a number of functions. And no matter how cloaked you might be in it, you can't make your whole self invisible, even if it's smaller than a pinprick. You need just enough of your eyes to stay visible that light can hit them and you can still see. Now, perceiving a fraction of a pupil hanging in space, smaller than a grain of sand, 
would be beyond most people. But you've been trained to look for them because they always move in two. <laughs> oh, my ear eyes. Um, <laughs> yeah. I am um, lizard. <laughs> uh, and as fast as I can, I'll spin and not only draw both of the hawks, but my wings <laughs> come out. Hell yes. Uh, for the first time in this campaign, go ahead and give me an attack roll. Oh. Um, yeah. uh, 25, 25 hey, points. One better. Yeah. 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 <laughs> um, you whip around. Um, you see where the eyes are, so you don't need to even see where the neck is. If the eyes are that far apart, right there. Uh, the first thing that becomes visible is the blood hitting the wall, and you hear the drop before the spell fades. Oh my god! Yeah. Um, this person went from being invisible to being dead and didn't have time to register what was happening. You see a body materialize out of invisibility. Chunks of skin carved off of a shaved head. Lips carved off of a face. What? Wearing rags covered in infernal runes. A mortal man who nonetheless is stitched together with orange irises and bloodshot eyes staring out of a dead face. You hear behind you from the mirror. Oh. You will never reach the wild mother's embrace in time. Are you looking for something? You turn around and in the mirror you see a shape in mist, swimming in the fog, in the mutilated face of Vespin Chloris. Reaches forward, hits the other side of the mirror, the glass cracks, and the face is gone, and the crack remains as you see your own image behind the shattered glass in the reflection. And that's all for this episode. That's all for this episode of Xandria Unlimited Calamity. As you are uh, preparing to exit the room, you hear a noise. Ascending stone in your back pocket, in, in, in one of the secret compartments that you keep, uh, a small sending stone is I'll retrieve it. Uh, as you hold it aloft and move it so that it can create noise, uh, you hear a voice say, this is Talon to Wingspan, Talon to Wingspan. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I am in position and I am reporting that Egghead is preparing to break curfew and sneak out of the house to go to a party. And you said that she's not allowed to leave, but she's about to leave, and she has no idea that I'm here. She has no idea that I can see her. She's about to do it. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> this is this is Carl. <laughs> This is your son, son. Kier. Yeah. This is your son, Kier. Uh, um, he's using code names for Talon, you himself Talon. and your daughter that you have never heard before. Um, they change a lot. The code names change a lot depending on what he thinks is cooler that week. Um, oh, and you are standing in a room with a dead body, listening to your son describe <laughs> your daughter about to head out to one of what have to presumably be many parties happening on the eve of the replenishment. Sure. Uh, Talon too. This is. Wingspan. Oh. Say again, this is oh. Wingspan. Communication's a little, a little shoddy. Wow. Did you say Egghead is snuck out? Affirmative. I see her, she's, uh, she snuck downstairs to the kitchen and she got a bottle normally reserved for uh, Wingspan and Clear Eye and, <laughs> uh, <laughs> And I saw her take a swig from it, and then she made a face like it was really bad. And then she took another swig from it, and then made a face like it was even worse. I don't know what it's about, but I know she's up to no good. 
This is very good, Talon 2. Very good. No. You are in no way to engage with Egghead. She's dealing in dark magic. <laughs> I do <knew> it. <laughs> keep an eye, but keep your distance. I'll be. I kind of look over my shoulder at the floor <laughs> in the room. I'll be home when I can. I, uh. I love you very much. Is that, uh, I, oh, I love you too, Dad. Sorry, I thought we were still doing. Some no, no, talent too, talent too. Keep, <laughs> keep, keep objective. Uh, keep objective professionalism. Yeah. No, no telling who oh, could be watching. Cop, copy that wingspan, and 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 I and me too. Me too. Thanks, son. I'll, I'll be home later. Okay. Do you, do you know if Mom's supposed to come home tomorrow, or is she gonna miss the whole? Is she gonna miss the whole replenishment? Uh, I don't know. Uh, <clears throat> I, I don't. I don't. I don't know. She, I think she's gonna try and, and make it back by tomorrow. Your mom's a very busy scientist, brilliant woman, as you know. Um, but it, you know, she she works at her own pace. But I, I'm sure if she can be here. She will be. Affirmative. We'll keep an eye to the skies, Pop, and I'll, I, we, we span, uh, and I'll, and over, and I'll tail Egghead and make sure that no funny business. Okay, <laughs> uh, uh, copy that, Talon, too. Don't get, uh, again, too close and stay away from the evil, dark magic uh, uh, liquor, uh, uh, drinks that she's. Uh, Don't worry, Dad, I already collected a vial and I stored it in my evidence locker. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Talon, too. Where would this evidence locker be located? The evidence locker is in a secret compartment under my bed. Uh, no, I, it's in a different place. Don't worry. I, it is nothing nothing else is under my bed. I have to go. I gotta go real quick, but I'll talk to you soon. All right, talk to you too, uh, Talon too. Over and out. Over and out. It's actually just over, but he always says over. <laughs> out. <laughs> It's a snitch. <laughs> yeah, and, you're, and you're a big fan of that. <laughs> yeah, my son's loyal. My son's loyal. <laughs> you know, you know who's <laughs> that was oh, so amazing. Oh my um, god. And I think also somewhere in this room, uh, there is a small token. Not something that is of mechanical significance. a small token of an old friend. A gift given to you long ago. A locket, simple orb inscribed with runes to be filled with something of safekeeping to remind you that the long years could part you that friendship would win out in the end. What do you remember of your old friend Evandrin as you look at this locket? That's, that's it. Despite the like sort of uh, suffusion of warm memories and good feelings that attended him handing me that locket, all she can remember is those last few days before everything broke bad and uh, the panic of not knowing how to help him and not knowing how responsible she was as he began to fade. So it's that like burst of joy and then the creeping guilt the memory of your friend becoming translucent, incorporeal, and fading, such that when the time came to inter, there were no remains. Mm. Nidus, you behold as the spirit itself of the world is rendered visible and realize you are standing in the 
bloodstream of the cosmos. I think Knight is just hands up, tears falling down his face. It's beautiful! <laughs> it's truly incredible! Uh, I'm gonna move my arcane ward over him in that moment. <laughs> the dream of the dream of a cabin boy deck hand taken aboard a pirate ship to look at a flying city and to say one day I could be at the helm of a great working of magic. You watch the beating heart of your world flow magically through this room. Boom. And as the bow finishes spinning, a rod of pure gold slides into the light and the stone dome closes. The spinning stops and the engine pulses, mirroring the heartbeat of your world. It's a mediocre mind that tries to replicate what's already been. We're going to go somewhere new now. Yes. All of us. Yes. As you say that, Laren, you feel the miniature model in your hand lift off and begin to travel. It's traveling in the same direction as your city. And as it travels, you see two more gems light up on the lay right. And another two, and then four more. And the trajectory of the lay rudder, your little miniature train, this nothing more than a toy, really, stops moving sideways. It moves up at a diagonal. But what a strange diagonal. And as it moves, it becomes translucent and fades, vanishing from this plane. And you see the gems on the lay right. Mm. Mm. Beep, beep. And a signal of recognition. Somewhere beyond this realm, your toy is safe and in one piece. Oh. You see, um, uh, you see poorly concealed, concealed tear lines on Laren's face. Like she didn't, she didn't get them all, uh -huh. and she is clutching a locket that you know was given to her by Evandrin, your husband. Uh -huh. um, you know that you know that she and your husband were dear, dear friends prior to uh, his his return to Avalier and becoming first knight prior to you. Yeah. And I, 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 I approach. Laren, and I just, um, I kind of catch the little bit that you have uh, missed. Uh, Thanks. Are this you all right? It. Yeah. Uh, hey, look at me. I'm here for you, no matter what you need. Thank you. I need to talk to you. Let's get everybody together. There's a lot to talk about, and we're running out of time. Laren. Another first night of Avalier in this very chamber once told you, I'm here for you no matter what you need. Yeah. When? I was gone for like 20 fucking minutes. You're Sometimes. always gone at the most important times. Okay, oh, listen. Do you want to do this Personal, right now? Oh, this I, seems my, like it's My just, wings kind of reach yes. around. Let Laren, me go. It kind of just Let me go. Out. Not, 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 All I'm saying not, is, you're so focused on your own thing, as ma magnificent and monumental as it might be, but there's something going on in the city right now that actually matters to people, and you're just concerned with your invention, again, whether it works or not. I go over and I pull a goblet off of the <laughs> shelf behind a little mini bar in this room, and I walk over and I say, here, it makes whatever cocktail you want. I'm gonna kill him. Mm. Mm. I understand. <laughs> Perhaps before we do that, though. I'm gonna fully kill him. I'm... You remember the first time someone explained apogee solstices to you? It's a woman that you knew as a child. Uh, you don't remember her name anymore because nobody does. Oh my God. God. You are fucking kidding me. You <laughs> learned it 
from that's her? Right. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. We learned it from watching you, Mom. <laughs> um, Mom? Mom? Uh, Mom? <laughs> um, <laughs> A beautiful woman with raven hair, who was one of the greatest wizards you ever met, once told you what was possible on a given Apogee solstice. So we know that something is amiss, and we know that something is coming for us, and we know that other cities are creating weapons. And I congratulate you for your beautiful achievement, and I share that ambition and that wonder about those planes and that exploration. But I'm put off by this so-called champion of the Matron of Ravens, who's come here to warn us and couldn't even utter the words of the betrayers, because he was scared. And that is precisely why I kneel to no god. Because the second you kneel to one of them, you kneel to them all. Something is here, it wants to threaten us, but we are the Ring of Brass. So gather your wits. Gather your courage, gather your strength, and do the job that you know you need to do because this city needs us. Xerxes, can I implore you to set a guard outside of this room, and can I show the rest of the Ring of Brass this room? And as you so say you... that, Xerxes is continuing this like <laughs> monologue, and you can start to feel it. <laughs> you start to feel his blood boiling, and all of a sudden, each one of you starts to feel almost a simmering of your own blood, as if it starts to like, if, Passion and rage could be contagious, which I believe it absolutely is. You're starting to feel it invade you and start to simmer and like make your blood boil. And then it expands out of you a little bit. And you see this like cosmic dust start to swirl around you as you gain 19 temporary hit points. Oh. I'd like to use this as oh my, my inspiring, inspiring leader, leader, baby. Hey, we love inspiring leader. Love 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 the best results will come from a religion check. A plus three. Is this all of us? <laughs> all of you. You're all in the room. You can all. Look. Also, just saying, handled handled that with a you know with just a melee weapon. I didn't, didn't need any. You know. <laughs> I just rolled a natural twenty for my religion check. Oh! 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 Runes everywhere. You hear in your mind. It's not a comforting feeling. Nobody likes to feel like they're dreaming when they're wide awake. Oh, God. God. You look into this man's eyes and a term floods into your mind. It's a term in infernal. It means puppet. It's a human so devoted to you that it's not even worth magically dominating them or charming them anymore. They just let you into their soul. And the word is knauf. Man you are looking at became a cleric of a betrayer. And he became a cleric of a betrayer looking at the speed of these growths, maybe a little over two weeks ago. What would you do if you came back to the world after a long time away and nobody worshipped you and you needed to make some moves real quick? The, this is a mortal man that was forced to understand things that he was not ready for because his master didn't need a servant. He just needed a puppet. As all of you stand from your seats at the ivy table, outside, you hear, oh, oh, dude, no. The fireworks extravaganza has oh, begun. Oh, 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 
You want to investigate the gift of Dean Hollow, like Risha Hollow? Yes, yes. I think me and Lairin are tagging along. Yep. And a uh, quick stop at the gift table. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, long, beautifully wrapped gift, very stylish, uh, as is the fashion for necromancers. It's a velvet black box yes. with a sort of lovely yes. black ribbon on it. Um, the most goth of The most goth presents. of gifts. <laughs> uh, it's quite long, it's quite elongated. Uh, you open it up for this enormous box. You see there's like a velvet raised stand that's the whole length of the box. And in the center, in a little depression shaped for it, there's a small vial of a clear liquid. Very, It's quite small, like, you know, uh, less than a mouthful. Um, and there's a note attached to it. Read it. Um, the note says, when the time comes, this will be the easier way out. All things end. <gasps> Lives, stories, even ages. Do, do, do you, what? Do you read that out loud? Because I am for sure like opening other gifts. I don't read it out loud. That's why not. I fold it, and I just make eye contact with Lairin. We have enough of a bond yeah. that you just see me look at you. Necromancers have such a penchant for the dramatic. So poetic. We should have a conversation. Mm-hmm. 25 uh, lets you know that you should be casting Detect Thoughts right now. That, okay, <clears throat> that's, uh, yeah, Detect Thoughts. Let's do it. Um, as she goes there, um, leave it to, well, it's hard to tell who cast it, but you know it wasn't an enchanter, because this modify memory was sloppy, and it was done very fast. Uh. You see Lycretia go invisible uh, to follow Pervon out of the room, and you see Magister Cormorant turn, um, who was also one of the people speaking, and you see Cormorant says, oh, <laughs> Valedictine, can I speak with you for a moment and put a hand on her neck and begin to tap a somatic component to a modify memory spell wow. uh, on her neck? Uh, the invisibility was about to fade because Lycretia was about to do something deadly. And then you see and hear Pervon as Loquacious and Xerxes run out. And because they ran out, Lycretia killed the spell. Damn, they were gonna take a shot. I saved someone's life today. (laughs) Oh my. (laughs) Don't tell him. (laughs) Please don't tell him. I was there too, and I said champion, which stopped him. Uh, (laughs) Yes, it is. Behind this cleric who's speaking, there are three people talking. Vespin Chloris, Lycretia Hollow, (gasps) and Loris of the Weaver's Mask. Mother. (sighs) He was so cool. Cool guys don't do bad things. <laughs> um, oh, she left. Uh, <laughs> as this as this is, is cropping up here, do any of you have the ability to read lips, or or at least can like make an attempt? Yes. 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 As long as, as, long as it's a language that I speak. Observant. Yes, they they are speaking common. Absolutely. It have- Reading his lips. Um, you see him talking, and he's clearly reacting to something that Loris has just said. And you see he's sort of being very cavalier and says, well, of course, Loris, that's your opinion, and you're more than entitled to it. I don't take such a limited view of what is possible in an age of wonders. Obviously, if it were impossible, it wouldn't have already happened once. We're talking about how to improve on existing technology. The Matron's breakthrough already opened the door for all of us. You know what the Gaudrashari are about. Um, he, uh, you see that he then says, says, um, uh, you see that there's a momentary confusion. Um, uh, uh, <laughs> you see there's a moment of confusion, and he says, uh, he looks at both of them and says, the City of Crowns bears the Tree of Names. Um, he says, the City of Crowns bears the Tree of Names, uh, and says, oh, am I saying something you don't know? Maybe if you took a, le- a little less time flying that city and a little bit more time cracking the books, you'd know this. And he finishes his drink uh, and walks away. 
Thanks. Does that ring any bells in either of our domes? If, if any of you, if any of you can hit uh, a high DC history check right now, come on. Um, no problem. I'm pretty sure. I, I'm no expert. I think I think he said tree of gnomes. Actually, gnomes. yeah, I think it was hey, gnomes. Oh, you hey, look hey. up gnomes. I'll look up tree okay. names. Okay. Not great. Natural twenty. Oh. Oh. Too, just in case. Damn. For a <laughs> 31. Yeah. That's an oh eight God. plus three. Breaking that math. Uh, the Tree of Names. Uh, I gotta honor in that 20. The Tree of Names doesn't get talked about as much anymore because uh, it was protected. 120 years ago by the Arboreal Calyx. Yes! Sorry, cool. Damn. The really? The name, the Tree of Names, was protected, or the, the tree itself was protected by the Arboreal Cortex? It was or what built over it or around it? Built yeah, over and around it. Wow. That and we, tree is fucking important if it's uh, not the core oh, of something no. important. There was a tree in my dream, in the palm of the Betrayer God. Mm. You're right. And as Evandrin approached it, he knelt, and the blossoms from the tree caught wind and fell on him. And that's what caused him. I think that's what made him sick. At least, if, 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 if there's any truth to the, to the dream that I had, then it has something to do with Evandrin, and that, that tree has something to do with these betrayers. There's, there's obviously a connection. We're all seeing that. You look and the clue you notice that has nothing to do with the records you pulled is that you see the rest of this file, this like gilded box that has rows of gilded placards within it, and it's all of the work of Elena Tuveris, this reporter. Um, at the back of it, you see a compartment labeled Evandrin Altera, and it is empty. Can I? Oof. I'll bring uh, Loquacious' attention to it. This is odd, don't you think? What is, the fact that it's empty? Yeah. Former first knight, a man of great import, high esteem, yes. all missing. Who has access to these files besides you and... Well, Elena, the reporter who gathered this stuff, she doesn't work here anymore. You wouldn't know where these files could could be. She could have taken them with her, or destroyed them, or they could have been misplaced. I'll give it another look. I don't know. On the I don't know, does my ring do anything? Um, I'm going to need Loquacious to roll a deception check. Ah! It's a 30. Oh my god. Oh my so god. now what's going to happen is this. That's a 30. It's a 30 deception from Loquacious? Yeah. That's not that there's anything untoward happening here, but that is above what the Ring of Honor will detect. So this comes down to the instincts of Seret alone. Wow. I'm actually going to ask, I think rolls, I just, yeah, I'm going to need you to roll insight and I'm going to need you to tell me if you. Get 30 or 30. higher. What do you 30 need, to, what do you, what do you, what do you need to roll on the die to beat 30? He can't do that. Uh, to, to break a 30, I need a 17 oh, or higher. You can, you do, got it. Two you can do it. Come on. Nope. Come on. No. Oh. <gasps> 23. So I open the door. Yeah. <laughs> now, as you attempt to open the door, you just, the door is locked. How authoritative do the assembled wizards feel like being? I hate restraint. Do you happen to have a knock spell handy? I can do you one better. I summon constructs. What's the biggest, oh. dumbest statue in here? It's mine now. <laughs> <laughs> I'll have it, thanks. Yeah. <laughs> thanks. 
um, a statue of a like spell knight behind you in the wall. We answer the call of the architect. Open the door. <laughs> the door is blasted <laughs> off its hinges uh, and scatters into a darkened office. Uh, Architect Arcane, as your uh, construct smashed the door in, you heard something in here. Oh. <laughs> uh, show yourself. Roll initiative. He's going to. Oh! Let's go. Let's go. This is going to be a to whom it may concern. I'm going to cast Fireball. Yes! <laughs> hey, you know what? If I have a direction, I know how to get a concentration check. <laughs> yeah. um, uh, hell yeah. Go ahead and roll damage. Or actually, uh, so sorry. Deck You're... save against a 20. Damn. Amazing. 20? Level 14. Oh. Um, let me ask a question That's to you. Ferocious. Um, 41 damn. points of fire damage. Good job! Gosh. 41 points. Good job! So this dude's gotta make a DC 20 constitution save? Yeah, no thanks. Even shit up. Okay. Well, let's be fair, he still has to make the deck save to like not take half damage. Oh, he quite failed. The okay, cool. <laughs> I was just trying yeah, to Yeah, I hit a nat one back here on that deck oh, save. Okay. Uh -huh, uh -huh. I'm just gonna have uh, my big boy move forward. That's so I'll talk about if I get a plus 12. All right, as the construct goes up and makes two slam attacks, 26 points of bludgeoning damage. Whoa. What? Whoa. Yes. yes. What does he add to smack? Uh, it's a D8 plus four plus a spell's level of Brennan, bludgeoning Brennan, damage. Brennan's yeah, great. Yeah, per slam Brennan's attack, and he does two. <laughs> um, Magister Cormorant appears on the verge of casting Chain Lightning, and instead you burn him half to death, and your construct punches his chest so hard that it breaks all of his ribs, oh. uh, smashes his heart and organs into the wall behind him, and he is dead. Oh! That's it? That's all she wrote, folks. 66 oh. hit points. Let's go! Oh my god. Damn it. Thank you. Whoa, yeah. you Holy fuck. <sighs> Pacer's <What>? like <laughs> <laughs> And you see there is a wall that has a stream of water pouring down it. Very slight, making almost no noise, almost like those slate fountains that just have a sheet of water coming down them. You look into it. You activate your divine sense. You've never detected anything fiendish before. Or at least, maybe you thought you did, but it was nothing compared to this. Carwin is not in the bed. You see a horned figure in red, bleeding and dying in the bed. The last time you saw this figure was the size of a mountain. <sighs> you have reached the wall. I put my hand on it. Does Xerxes want to go through? Ah! He goes through. <laughs> <laughs> you are in another time, another realm. Uh, you walk through. Silver mist, a bed soaked with blood, and you smell the smell of blood, but you see a wheezing, rasping devil. Same one. Same one. Now your size, now the size of a man. Mm. <laughs> it's all right. I can't really die. No, oh, you don't, I'm not in danger right now, it just hurts, that's all. You know me. Then who are you? Yes. Betrayer. Sinner, most unclean. I am the Lord of the Hells. I don't believe in the gods. Lately, I don't much either. Give me your hand. 
and he puts a blood soaked hand in your hand. It feels weak. It feels. I heal him. I cast cure, cure wounds on him. The Lord of Hells. The Lord of Hells? The name they gave you. Or the name you gave yourself. When you get to the table, and there's not much left but scraps, you take what you're given. You look, and for the first time now that he is no longer writhing in pain, this man is beautiful. He, he bears in passing almost a resemblance if it can be said, to Evandrin. Oh, why'd you do that? I knew you were gonna say that. What does that mean, though? I can't help but his name just falls out of my mouth. Evandrin. What the fuck? I, I don't look the same to everybody. Oh. Oh. They said before, before it all went wrong, they said I was the most beautiful of them all. You were. But as well you know, beauty is in the eye of the beholder, and so I sometimes look like the most beautiful face that mortals have seen. He looks at you and says, Evandrin. That's the name you just said. Yeah. That was your love, yes? It was. Why do you remind me of him? Only you could answer that. I never know who I'm going to look like to people. <sighs> Is this a trick? Are you playing with me? People often think I'm tricking them, and I never have anything to say to that. What can you say to someone when they think that you're always going to trick them? I don't know of Andrin, but he must have been a very good man because yeah, he's not in my realm. <sighs> Let's get you cleaned up. Will you do something for me? Yes. Will you kneel with me? I will. I want to hear everything. He kneels with you. I cast ceremony. <laughs> you cast ceremony with him. Marriage? <laughs> atonement. Ah. You begin to cast atonement. The prime deities, as they called themselves, stepped in to fight them, to double down on their overreach. Our promises were to the primordials, and we were called betrayers! I, I lay my hand on his chest. Easy. I have been burning for so long. They used you. They did. And I'm sorry for that. I can help you. You say you know me? When the time comes and you step from this void into our world, don't you forget me. Don't you forget the kindness that we're capable of, because we're your children, too. We are made of the same stuff that what you initially created, we come from the same thing. And if you remember the stories as well as you seem to, then you know that at some point you turned your pain on us. They used you and then you used us to get back at them. I have a son that's not of my blood, 
But that is my son. I met Evandrin when he was just an infant, and I held that boy in my arms, and I fell in love with him. I am his father, but he is not of my blood. And in that same way, we are your children. I don't give my word lightly. You have my word on this, Xerxes Ilorez. Not for all the ages of the world will I forget you. You are not I see faults in people. I know what they have done wrong. You want to know your fault, Xerxes. You are very trusting. You say that I am being used. You, my friend, are being used. By you. I am the father of lies. You are being lied to, and not by any god. He puts a hand on your shoulder and interrupts your casting of atonement. And instead, casts a spell on you and puts a protection from evil and good on you. That will protect you from myself, from Celestials, from Fae. Thank you. You see, he, uh, uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and send this to you because I want you to read this. You want me to read it? I want you aloud. Aloud. Let's go. Uh, I love it. The stars are leaving us. Our hands cannot reach. The limbs of the tree can no longer scribe the name of our deliverance. We will soon be as broken as our promises. Avalier shall fall. All shall fall. And from our folly will the hands that forged the world, banished themselves from the broken things they have made. This was deemed false. Yes. In that. Uh, oh, we spoke to a member of the Octothurge um, and we, we delivered it and said, this is the prophecy. Um, and the, the uh, Guildmaster of the Guild of Divination um, uh, decreed that it was false. Because uh, it obviously can't be true. Obviously. A, as you're leaving the Magisterium, you get a ping on your um, Ring of Masks um, from Akami Ro, the uh, Helmswoman of Avalir. Oh. Hold on. And I fire it up and look off. Um, Akami, uh, Architect Arcane! Hi. Great news. We are in position over Kath Moira. All is well. We are now at the intersection of all three ley lines. And as of this moment, descent has begun. Hooray, descent. Uh-huh. I'm gonna stay here just in case. Obviously, the whole rest of the process is automated, but just in case anything. Nope. Mask goes neutral. Black. What? Ah, the fuck? Okay, a, a bad thing. Just, we have to go to the helm now. Now, now, oh. Uh, now. All right. You walk through um, this neighborhood, uh, and as you are walking, uh, you hear a voice speak out. Ah, the Ring of Brass. Uh, and Lycretia Hollow uh, turn, mm. uh, looks at you, uh, mm. says. Looks at us? She's. She's in front of us? Not just her. 
you look around at the rooftops around you. I'm gonna need everyone here to roll initiative. Oh my <laughs> god. And that's all for this episode. Oh, no. <laughs>